Hi everyone, thanks for listening to my presentations. Today I'll be talking about mesedema coma. Mesedema coma. If you haven't listened to parts 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, please kindly do. Because this will form part 6 or 7 on hypothyroidism. Mesedema coma. Let's go. Okay, mesedema coma. Before now, you've probably gone to my channel and you've come across signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism, right? Including treatment and so on. But today, this is all about a severe form of hypothyroidism. And when that happens, that will lead to decreased function of many organs in the body. It is a medical emergency. Okay, why are we talking about mesedema coma and why have I decided to make it a separate presentation on this one? Why not just part of signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism? Well, I've decided to bring it out separately because it requires lots of attention and we need to act quickly. Why that? Mortality is very high here. Very, very high about 35 to 50 percent of patients diagnosed with mesedema coma will actually die and death is due to sepsis or hypothermia or cardiac complications or renal failure respiratory failure or central nervous system involvement well some will call it silver lining, some will call it uh, the line at the end of the tunnel. But one good thing here is that mesedema coma is rare nowadays. What are the possible clinical features that will point to mesedema coma? Hypotension, decreased heart rate, that is bradycardia. Glucose level is down, that is hypoglycemia. Vital signs will show us decreased temperature, hypothermia, severe hyponatremia, sepsis, decreased level of consciousness, coma, even from the name, right? And if intervention is not done on time and appropriately, death. Diagnosis. We should have thyroid function tests done. And that may give the clue if we are dealing with primary hypothyroidism, where we're going to find TSH to be high or increasing, and T4 to be low. But it could be central hypothyroidism, where TSH will be normal or low but T4 will remain low. And also, we should do something else. We should ask a cortisol level. Someone is asking me, what the business with cortisol level? Well, remember, we might be dealing with sepsis, and cortisol will be high in the face of septicemic shock. And also, that will give us a clue about adrenal insufficiency particularly Addisonian crisis that may also present with severe hypotension. Okay, in addition to the thyroid function test already done and the cortisol level and we've ruled out Addisonian crisis, what else are we going to do? Electrolyte levels should be assayed, particularly sodium. Okay, then we should have complete blood count done blood, microscopy, culture, and sensitivity, and urine, microscopy, culture, and sensitivity. Remember, part of the factors I listed that will be responsible for the high mortality is sepsis. Of course, procalcitonin. In fact, check my channel for a separate presentation on procalcitonin. 
So I'm not going to waste your time going over that right here. And why is procalcitonin helpful? With the value of procalcitonin, we'll be able to gain two things. One, we'll be sure we are dealing with bacteria as the cause of the sepsis, or we are dealing with virus. Procalcitonin will help us define that. And secondly, when we have administered our antibiotics either empirically or after microscopic culture and sensitivity, we will know if our antibiotics are doing the job or not. Okay, we can have BMP and pro-BMP done, particularly in the face of heart failure, blood, rear nitrogen, and creatinine in renal failure, and of course, liver function tests and liver enzymes, and bleeding time, APTT, blood glucose, remember we mentioned that we'll be dealing with apoglycemia, okay, and toxicology screening, and why that? Someone is saying, what's a business with that? Yes, it is my business. Someone is in coma. Even if I'm double sure that this is as a result of hypothyroidism, it is possible that it could be concomitant drug ingestion or anything else, right? Okay, treatment. Admits into the intensive care unit. First thing first, right? Share the airway, foreign body, secretion, anything blocking the airways, suction, remove as is appropriate. Breathing, what is the respiratory rate? Cyanosis, central or peripheral, auscultation, any adventitious signs, percussion, any donors anywhere, no, any deformity of the chest region, is the abdomen moving with respiration, and of course, after getting all this, what is O2 SARS? We'll get all this done immediately. C for circulatory system, what's the blood pressure? Remember, we'll be dealing with hypotension, right? So what's the blood pressure? So that I'll be able to know when to act quickly, the more, okay? Heart rate and fluid status, dehydration or not. And of course, if we have a cardiac monitor, we'll hook it at this time, check out for arrhythmia and so on. IV lines, of course. Then we put our police catheter, because this is not individual that will get up and go to the washroom or gents or toilet, depending on where you are on the surface of the earth and what you call it, okay? Cardiac monitor is on. We have to intubate here, okay? Then the main treatment will begin immediately. Hydrocortisone intravenously, 100 milligram every eight hours for about 48 hours. Level tyrosine, that is T4, 300 microgram intravenously start. Then, depending on the value of your glucometer, get the value of glucose, but remember, the thinking is that we'll be dealing with hypoglycemia, but if the glucose are uh, estimated and the result is out and is not hypo, mm -hmm, normal maintenance fluid. But if it is hypo, give intravenous gestures. Okay, still on treatment, then we are back with daily dose of level tyrosine, and that should be between 50 and 100 micrograms intravenously daily. And we can add triodotyronine at the dose of 10 microgram intravenously start, then 2.5 microgram every eight hours. Okay. We've been dealing with cortisol level, right? We need to get the laboratory report right now because that will help us as per sepsis, sepsisimic shock, and adrenal insufficiency. Of course, we have to do physical examination all. 
let's not forget, I will make a separate presentation on the relationship between the cortisol level and sepsis, septic shock, including adrenal insufficiency in the face of sepsis and septicemic shock. Okay, watch out for that. Okay, back to physical examination. We have to do general examination, right? And of course, pay more attention to cardiovascular system. And of course, the features of hypoglycemia. Now, someone is asking, why will you bring out the features of hypoglycemia out of all these gamuts of problems? No, it's no one of those possible causes of mortality that could be corrected immediately. What do you have to do in the face of hypoglycemia? Just give intravenous glucose, right? And the patient is alive. That's why I don't want us to overlook it. Get your vasopressors at end. Why that? When you are doing everything and the blood pressure is not going up, then you can give your vasopressors. Still on treatment, remember, I have stated earlier that part of the causes of mortality here is sepsis. Therefore, you don't have to waste your time waiting for microscopy, culture and sensitivity reports before administering your antibiotics. So you can have intravenous antibiotics empirically. Okay? And of course, check out weight procalcitonin level. EKG or cardiac monitoring is part of the system from onset. Rewarming. You may use warm blanket or if you have the privilege, you can use bear hogger. That will help in rewarming. And we have to correct hyponatremia. We have to correct hyponatremia because that is one of the causes of mortality here. However, I'm not saying you have to shut your eyes away from potassium or magnesium because they can also lead to serious cardiac complications. So, the treatment here will involve emergency room doctors or intensive care room doctors and nurses. But don't leave out endocrinologists here, please. Consult them immediately. Others may be involved depending on your center and the protocol available. And with that, I've come to the end of this presentation. Mesenchyma coma is a very serious problem that is complicating hypothyroidism and it will lead to death in about 35 to 50 percent of patients that will present with this trouble called mesenchyma coma. The next presentation will be all about Hashimoto's encephalopathy and that will form part seven of seven and that will be the end of this series as far as apotyroidism is concerned. Thanks for listening to my presentations. Please remember to share and subscribe. I appreciate it.